Hey everybody, um, today we're going to be talking about gas power cycles. Now, before we go too deep into this, what is a gas power cycle? First of all, let's take the word power, okay? When we say power, we're talking about something that does work for us, right? So we're talking about like a heat engine, or we're talking about like a turbine, right? That's what um, a gas power cycle includes, right? When we say gas, we're talking about ideal gas, right? So we're going to be using our PV equals RT, a PV equals MRT equation, right? Um, our ideal gas equation. And we know that a cycle is just we're operating where we st our start point is the same as the end point, right? Um, it's important to note that with these gas power cycles, we're dealing with closed systems. So our Q minus W equals delta U comes into play, okay? Um, you'll see more as we do examples, but just keep that in mind. Um, now let's talk about the Carnot um, gas cycle, okay? Now, we talked about the Carnot cycle before, and we know that from one to two, we're dealing with an isothermal process, right? And from two to three, we're dealing with an adiabatic process. And remember, everything is reversible here, but an adiabatic plus a reversible process gives us an isentropic process. And I didn't say this at the time, but entropy is coming more into play now. So we can take that into account. So that's isentropic, right? And then this is isothermal again. And then this is, wow, three to four. And then this is isentropic again, right? And that will sort of looks a certain way on a graph. So let's say we were to draw this on a TS diagram, right? This um, Carnot process. We did something that looks like this. This would be our state one, and let's say we ended up going like this, right, to our state two. And we have a constant temperature, but we're increasing in our um, entropy, right? And um, what we're going to get there is our QH being put in, right? And then we're going to get our isentropic process. Um, it's meant to be a straight line down. Right. Wow. Yeah, something like that. Right? So we get our isentropic process from two to three. And then we get something like this, and then something like this. Right? And then this is our QL. And then we get four to one. Right? So what we end up getting is something that looks like this, and then this is our TL, and this is our TH, right? And this is just to sort of familiarize you with um, what the cycles that we're going to be dealing with sort of end up looking like. We sort of get these square things, and inside these square things, we can sort of figure some things out and just, just um, they might ask you for like the work um, produced or something. Um, this is just to sort of give you like um, a good grounding on what, what to expect to see. Um, there are also these things called cold air standard assumptions. You might see this written as like cold ASA or ASA also, right? And these are just things to assume when um, we're dealing with these um, engines. Because in your typical engine, what you're going to get is a mixture of air and fuel, right? And we're dealing with this air and fuel being compressed, being burnt and everything. But um, there are so many irreversibilities that we can take into account when dealing with these. So these cold air standard assumptions help us to um, sort of just, just look at a simplified version. So first of all, we assume that air and fuel mixture to be an ideal gas, okay? So um, we treat that air and fuel mixture, although it is a mixture of both, we treat it to be like it's an ideal gas, okay? Um, the combustion process is replaced with like Q in, okay? And that makes sense. And then... There's also like an exhaust process and we have Q out also, okay? We neglect frictional change and it operates on a cycle. So um, for your like assumptions, when they're asking you for an assumption um, or the conditions, right? As we do in our um, example problems, right? You can write cold air standard assumptions. That sums up everything I said. Or if you want to be really smart about it, you can just like, if you want to say, pretend like you know a little bit more, you can just write out everything I just said. They should give you credit for it. They might even give you more credit. But basically, um, that's basically what we're doing with a um, with with these gas power cycles. 
we're looking at the engines and looking at how they, op they operate and looking at how the pressure is affected, the volume, the temperature and the entropy um, that we're dealing with in that whole um, equation, equation, in that whole system, I guess, right? Um, it's just good to know some other things also. Um, so we have different types of engines. We have like spark ignition engines, which are your normal, um, like, I don't know if they're called patrol engines in America. I know we call them patrol engines in Nigeria, but I, I believe they're called patrol engines. Like your, your, basic, your basic gasoline engines, right? Those are your spark ignition engines. And there's something called a spark plug in those engines. And it's, it's sort of, um, to just give you a simplified version, it sort of just causes like a sudden expansion, right? Because of that spark, it, it lights up that fuel mixture and it causes an expansion in the uh, engine of the uh, piston cylinders and everything. And you also have your like compression ignition engines and these are your diesel engines. So those diesel engines operate in a different way than those patrol engines. And we're gonna see how those sort of work and what that sort of does to our graphs. Um, it's good to know that there are four strokes per one thermodynamic cycle. So those strokes that engines have, four of them make your wheel rotate once. And it's sort of, when I think about it, I'm like, how does the engine work that fast if my wheels are rotating so rapidly and everything? When you know, when you look at your RPM and everything, but that's, that's what I've been taught. And I mean, it makes sense. Um, each stroke sort of turns the wheel like one fourth. So it, it, it just does it really rapidly and constantly. But um, that's really what you need to know before diving into the um, actual, um, Power cycles, there are different ones, auto cycle, diesel cycle, and we're gonna tackle those. So if you didn't understand anything I said, please feel free to leave comments in the comment section. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's keep learning thermal. Thank you.